Now, if you thought that viruses were strange because they aren't alive, but they can infect you, prions are even more strange. So a prion is just a protein. And we've discussed that proteins do pretty much everything in your body. Proteins are enzymes. Proteins make the outside of your cell walls. Proteins are what you eat when you eat chicken or fish or some sort of meat or um, things like beans. Proteins are the building blocks of your whole body. So um, it's a little bit strange to think that a protein could be harmful, but a, but a prion is a protein that is just mal-shaped and able to infect other, um, other people, other animals. Prions are transmitted through the nervous system either through either through ingestion or direct contact with the nervous system of an infected individual or animal. Now examples of prion diseases are mad cow disease, which is transmitted when feedlots feed the brains of other cows to their cows and they become infected with these prions. Or there's a disease in humans called Crutzfeld-Jakob's disease and I'm not going to spell that for you. You can look up that in your book but it's abbreviated CJD. And there's very few prion diseases that actually affect human beings um, but there, there are a couple of them. Another characteristic of a prion is that they are very hard to get rid of. So prions are naturally resistant to most of the sterilization processes that we use. There are really stringent sterilization processes that will kill prions, but because the processes are outside the normal constraints that we use, when we do surgeries that involve the neurological system or the eyes, um, we will use generally disposable instruments or we will have to sterilize them using higher st standards than we normally do, higher temperatures, longer time, to be sure that we've killed these prion diseases that can be transmitted through nervous system contact. Prion diseases are always fatal. but it is not contagious by other means from individual to individual. So you have to come into contact with their nervous system in order to transmit this malformed protein prion disease. In a previous video, I told you that there are two types of cells in living creatures. There's prokaryotes, which are bacteria and archaea, and there's eukaryotes. So humans and fungi are eukaryotes. So when we think about fungi, generally we think about mushrooms, probably. But fungi can also be yeast or mold. And as a general rule, fungi are not terribly pathogenic. We do get um, yeast infections in the vagina and in the mouth. In the mouth it's called thrush. And you can get uh, fungal infections of your toenails or of the skin. But as a general rule, people with a healthy immune system don't have to worry too much about fungi making them very sick. However, if you do have immune compromised immune system, um, such as from AIDS or something along those lines, then you can get some pretty serious fungal infections. So they can be single-celled, like yeast, kind of floating around on their own, or they can form um, multicellular organisms, such as, the mon such as the mushrooms. And they have a unique ability to produce something called a spore. 
4 allows the fungi to survive extreme cold or heat or drying spells and then they can release these spores and eventually those will grow into new fungus. So if you do a YouTube search on fungal spores puffball mushroom, you'll get a pretty good idea of what I'm talking about, These how these spores can be spread through the air.